For fans of professional wrestling, this is the most exciting time in the industry since the Monday Night Wars of the mid-90s. Promotions like New Japan Pro Wrestling and Ring of Honor are more popular than ever. It gives fans and wrestlers an alternative to the mainstream. In this corner, we have Ring of Honor star Shane Taylor. You're used to that, but he's usually wearing far less clothing than he is this morning. <laughs> yeah, you're all true. dressed up in a suit Very today. True. Yes, ma'am. All right, we're going to back it up to how you grew up. Uh, yeah, and you say ooh because I literally, mm. you, you grew up, you grew up in, in Cleveland on the east side. You yes, say your house was shot up weekly. Yeah, um, where we lived at, it was a very busy corner with uh, drugs and violence and things of that sort. My dad, being the military man that he was, he didn't want that on our corner, at least for his boys. So he would uh, physically stop the guys from doing that. And no one likes when you lighten their pockets. So yeah. they would uh, come in and shoot up our house. So we weren't really allowed to even sit on couches. We would have to By sit the on the windows, floor. Yeah, yeah, yeah we would have to lay on the floor and do things of that sort because he would work too. And the last thing he wanted was to get that call at work that something had happened to one of us yeah. or my mom. So yeah. you just said something very powerful there because I, I think that oftentimes judgments are made if, if you're growing up in a neighborhood like that, mm -hmm. then it's a lost cause. Of it is not because what Absolutely is most not. important, obviously your atmosphere can affect you, but what's most important is you had parents yes. who knew the situation they were in mm -hmm. and wanted better for their children. Absolutely. And taught us the difference between right and wrong. Now, when you live in sort of a survivalist mentality, your views can be skewed, you know, on, on what is right and, and, and wrong, right. but knowing that and wanting a better life for us is how I got to this point. Yeah, you're, you know, all times people say, oh gosh, my mom, my dad, they're a drill sergeant. Yeah. In your case, your dad was <laughs> he, a drill he sergeant. Really was yeah. A drill yeah. sergeant. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, there was no playing around, there was no talking back, it was yes sir, no sir, yes ma'am, no ma'am, and there was no other way. Yeah, at, at times you would like, go out and actually train with sh uh, soldiers at the bases. Yeah, my dad would allow me to do PT with the guys, and they loved me and hated me at the same time, because he was like, you know, if he beats any of you, that's extra stuff for you guys to yeah, do. Yeah, right? And for me, it was like, hey, but if they beat you, you've got to deal with me. Yeah. So it was, it was a no-win for everybody. Really. What, lessons did you, <laughs> what lessons did you learn watching them go through that regiment every day? Just knowing what you wanted to do and be, being able to work hard uh, and, and having a goal. Um, working towards that goal and being the best that you can possibly be. That's what I learned. Yeah. Me. All right. So looking at your size right now, mm -hmm. uh, you were actually born a preemie. Yeah. Not a lot of people uh, know that. Um, <laughs> Um, they gave me like a, like a week to live when I was first born. Uh, they were putting all kind of IVs and stuff in my head. And my dad was like, enough of that. If he makes it, he makes it, but let him fight on his own. Yeah. And 33 years later, here I am. Yeah, born a fighter. Okay, so high school sports, as we know, oftentimes, you know, you have to try out for the team and the whole mm -hmm. bit. Were, were you a tryout person or did they just say, so-and-so, tryouts at three o'clock, you're already on? Oh, no, yeah. I, I tried out, uh, but I was fortunate enough. Uh, I had a lot of drive. Um, and I made every team that I was on. Uh, never was JV anything. Yeah, <laughs> football, wrestling, yeah. track and field. Mm -hmm. uh, in college, did wrestling. Mm -hmm. What was the first time you ever saw wrestling and, and it connected with you? Ooh, um, my dad used to take us to the Richfield Coliseum in Ohio. Uh, and I saw Kerry Von Erich against the Warlord. And not a lot of people remember that match, but I did because it went to a double count out and the place went absolutely bonkers. Yeah. Like people are throwing beer, they're throwing everything. And I'm looking around as a kid like, what is going on? <laughs> like, you have these two guys that no one here knows, but somehow garnered this reaction. And to me, that was incredible. So I was like, whatever it is they're doing to make these people that mad, I want to do. Yeah. You know what <laughs> right. I mean? So but you're right. there was an attraction to it. I remember as a kid watching was Jose Lafario in, in, yeah. in San Antonio, yeah. right? Yeah. Going up, my brother and I would sneak and watch it because they thought my parents wouldn't want, let, <laughs> want to let us watch it, right? But um, So your interest in wrestling, obviously, and by the way, mm -hmm. uh, you were the first uh, in your family to go to college. Yes, I was. And this yes, is so another was. reason why I think sports is so important. Mm. You know, Sometimes we dismiss it as just entertainment, right. but it is a pathway for a lot of, uh, of kids as well. Absolutely. Okay, so uh, you had your, your heroes, you mentioned that you would watch, mm -hmm. um, but you didn't go into it right away. You had some some side jobs and things. Door-to-door uh, -door salesman. <laughs> yes. Yes. Yeah, yes. I used to Ding sell dong. like um, cable and like coupon books and things of that sort, and I have friends now who are like, man, we love you to death, but if you show up at my door, I'm not buying anything <laughs> from you. Sorry. I'm, I'm not opening the door. Sorry, what? Oh, uh, no, yeah, sorry. Yeah. Go, no, sorry. Cutco? 
Yes, Cutco. Uh, I used to try to sell knives and things of that sort. <laughs> so, you again, so you show up at the door with knives. Right. That's it's, <laughs> it's a no-win situation. They're like, uh, mm, mm, Yeah, right. Mm, Close mm, the door. No, All right. Now, the one that made sense was bouncer and security. Yes. Uh, since I was 18, I've been doing security and bouncing and things of that, that sort, bars all around the country. Um, and you learn people skills there. You learn how to talk people down, you know, but or you just learn how to get people out of there, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so whatever you, you got to do. You got to go, and I got yeah. some knives. Okay, exactly, you got to go. Exactly. <laughs> we can't bring the knives <laughs> yeah, in yeah, there, yeah, obviously. Right. Yeah. Uh, but the, the, so the wrestling, when you got full-fledged mm -hmm. into it, um, it, it's like you got that feeling. Like when we walked out here and everybody started clapping, you, oh, you get that feeling I'm that you right talked about before. Right yeah. All right, it's taking you around the world, Mexico, UK, uh, Canada. Tell mm -hmm. us about Ring of Honor. Ring of Honor is the second biggest company in the country. Most people only know WWE. Oh, out uh, of the some ring. Some of my highlights yes. there, as you can see. Uh, yeah, but we uh, have the slogan, we are the best wrestling on the planet. That's exactly what we are. Some of the very best people in the world to do what we do. Um, and the growth wow. we've had as a company is incredible, and I'm extremely honored to be a part of it. Now, Man, I look good here. That's yeah, awesome. you do. You do. <laughs> okay, that poor guy. Okay, now I remember the wrestling team in high school. They didn't look anything like this. Oh no. Right? no yeah, no. and I gotta say, it's much more. You, it, it, there's there's skill there. You can obviously see the skill oh, yeah. there. Like y'all like Cirque du Soleil people, or whatever. But hey. but also um, there's there's a entertainment component to it. So I know oh, people absolutely. ask you all the time, how much of this is just entertainment? How much of this is true sport? When you're in the ring with me, you're fighting for your life. So <laughs> it's, uh, <laughs> it, 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 it's as real as it gets with me in there. Yeah. All right. The 17th anniversary Las Vegas pay-per-view, March 15th. Mm -hmm. It's a rematch. Yes. With myself and the Ring of Honor World Television Champion, Jeff Cobb. Uh, he was able to beat me a few months ago in Philadelphia. But the match that we had garnered so much attention. Um, and this rematch is one that I'm looking forward to. Because if I win this, then I become uh, only the third Af African American male in Ring of Honor's 17 year history to win that championship, and that's something that I want to do. Uh, the Madison Square Garden, which has been such a great history, that's April 6th, that's uh, sold out of uh, PPV as well. That's incredible. You know, to be the first company along with New Japan Pro Wrestling to sell out Madison Square Garden outside of WWE is incredible. Um, and so to be able to be you know, that story of being a kid from the east side of Cleveland, Ohio, to be walking into a sold-out Madison Square Garden, potentially being the Ring of Honor World Television Champion, Hollywood couldn't write a better story. Yeah. <laughs> All right. You are married with two kids, yes. and something tells me, like, uh, your wife is probably the best athlete of all if somebody gets in her husband's way. <laughs> Listen, she, <laughs> my, my wife is an art teacher. She's amazing. She's a little bit more low-key than I am, but... Uh, that it, it's a quiet rage, you know what I mean? You just yeah, don't want to. Yeah, you want the you quiet watch rage. The quiet what you, yeah, absolutely. And obviously, with fame it comes a bigger voice. Mm -hmm. You do charity work because you understand what so of many course. kids are dealing with. And what's the the charity that speaks to your heart? Oh man, uh, no, no, no charities by name specifically. But what I like 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 to do, as long as some of my boys, we go around to different schools for at-risk youth and we just preach um, just staying in school and finding mentors and finding people that will listen to you because a lot of times people get into situations that they just feel like are hopeless right. or they feel like there's no one out there that cares so you know who, who cares what they do uh, but we just let, let, let them know that if no one else sees them we do um, and we keep ourselves open to uh, any sort of communication that they did if they need to talk or, or yeah. anything. And at the end of the day, the most powerful person in your life, no matter what you're up against, the most powerful person in your life is you because Absolutely. the final choice is inside of you. Absolutely. All right, put it right here. Oh, oh wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> you guys didn't tell me yeah, I'd be yeah, competing yeah, today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Thank nervous. you very much. Thank we look so forward much. to seeing you, Russell. Best yes, of luck in that rematch. Thank you so much. And, and most of all, thank you for being a role model. Thank, thank you, you for having me. Thank you so much. All right. <laughs> This Friday at 8 p.m. He'll be challenging Jeff Cobb for the World Television. Shane also makes his Madison Square Garden debut, as we mentioned, at the Ring of Honor and New Japan Pro Wrestling G1 Supercard Saturday, April 6th at 6.30 p.m. And for information, just log on to GreatDayHouston.com. Coming up, where you can catch country artist Cody West at Rodeo, but he'll perform for us next. I'm singing for the last time. Versatile. 